My name is Amanda Mitchell. I am the CTAP serving at Ramsey County Library in Roseville working with youth. Um, the name of our project was Digital Skills Ebook Edition. I worked on this project with Laura and Jeff. It was born out of a shared interest in ebooks and a, a curiosity about the resources available to us in the Twin Cities, as well as our own experiences trying to navigate the landscape of free ebooks and understanding that it was, a, it was a pretty opaque and complicated process sometimes. So I'm now going to talk about the three main components for our project. We created printable PDF handouts for both readers who are interested in ebooks and educators who want to use ebooks in the classroom. We created a website with more resources and we did a process of collecting information from ABE educators to understand the need, their, their needs and questions about ebooks. I will quickly share with you a little bit about the handouts that we created for this project. Um, we designed them, like I mentioned before, in my, with both readers and educators in mind, and we wanted them to be a very basic introduction to the idea of ebooks, because there are lots of people who don't know what that means. Um, so we had basically frequently asked questions that sort of introduced you to the basic premise as well as a guide that helps you understand whether ebooks are a good fit for you to know what you need in order to access these services for example um, whether or not you need an e-reader or you can just use your phone um, or a laptop or any browser on a on a public computer um, so we helped we hope to help people um, expand their understanding of the role for a role of ebooks and um, learn about how versatile they are. Um, and that fits with our goal for this project to center around free resources, um, including the libraries in the Twin Cities, as well as online resources that have books that are out of copyright. Um, so helping people know that they already have the tools that they need to get involved with ebooks and that the resources to secure ebooks are available to them for free was one of the main goals of this. All right, and here are just two examples of handouts that we created. Um, one is just frequently asked questions, and then the second is a more detailed explanation of different ebook file types and the devices and software that you need to view them. And these handouts um, lived on our website which Jeff will now speak a little bit more about. Hi, I'm Jeff and I serve at Hired in Minneapolis. And on the right side of this slide is a screenshot or like a picture of the uh, simple website we created. It's uh, readebooksmn.wordpress.com. And um, the website has links to video tutorials on how to set up ebooks uh, for your respective library. Um, so like how to set it up on an Android phone or iPhone or um, even on a Kindle e-reader. And uh, the links are actually uh, directed to the tutorials on the library websites. Uh, the library websites are an excellent resource. Um, I guess our website is uh, maybe a resource for anyone that wants to learn about ebooks in general and wants, uh, I guess, to see the resources available at all three uh, library systems in the, twin, in the Twin Cities. So like uh, Ramsey County Library, Hennepin County Library, and uh, St. Paul Public Library. Um, and we also have information about Project Gutenberg. That's the uh, copyright free books. Um, that are free to download and read and uh, distribute. A lot of the classics are on uh, Project Gutenberg, like uh, Pride and Prejudice, that's one example. And uh, we also have ha uh, handouts about ebooks that uh, Amanda mentioned. And uh, there's also a handout on our website on how to read the New York Times for free uh, if you're a Hennepin County Library uh, patron. Um, and yeah, our a website will be available, I guess, uh, indefinitely. It's not 
still going to be around after August. Um, so feel free to share the link uh, to our uh, website. I can post that um, at the link in the chat after our presentation. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Laura, and I serve both adult options and education. Many of the adult basic education educators I spoke with desire to use free eBooks from the library. But the problem we heard often was that the process was cumbersome and problematic for their students that had many questions about download compatibility. This guide is our solution to make the answers to these questions more easily accessible and all in one guide. Ebooks are a great access for students to have access to tools that will assist them in their reading progress in English. Some of the tools available in ebooks include note taking, dictionaries, and pronunciation used easily at their fingertips for a more seamless reading experience. This guide was designed to assist students and teachers alike to utilize the ebooks in the classroom. Thank you. We welcome any questions you may have. All right. Thanks, Laura. Uh, while people are throwing questions and comments in the chat, I'll, I'll just make a comment that I feel like of all the projects, your project maybe got the most lucky that I feel like you were very well positioned both in your original idea to have a project that really does respond a lot to the pandemic that so many people are going to electronic books right now, as well as audiobooks. I know that's something even for myself personally, uh, like I really woken up to the Libby app through the libraries, which I had never used previous to the pandemic, and I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks that way. And then also with racial justice movements that I know a lot of libraries, like the Hennepin County Library has made a lot of uh, resources kind of freely available, um, like so there's many people from the system can once can read or uh, listen to books like How to Be an Anti-Racist or um, White Fragility or like some of the things that a lot of people are um, are reading right now. Um, so I'm looking here, Kim is asking the question. Uh, cool, definitely gonna save this site to share with adults in my life. Um, what do you wanna do? Uh, would, would you wanna do this as in-person program uh, so that you could, and how would you do this as, a, as an in-person program? So originally we did have a plan to do tabling where we could connect directly with community members um, and explain to them the, the wealth of resources that are available. Um, so there's, there's definitely a, a version of this project that is more um, interactive. Um, we'd also talked about doing, doing workshops um, that could give provide this overview um, in more detail and have the opportunity to, um, for people to ask more questions because it, getting, getting, um, getting engaged with these resources really can be, be tricky. Um, so yeah, I think that, I think that there, is, there is space for something like that for this project. Amanda, you're someone who works with youth at a library. Do you, how much interest do you notice that youth have in e-books e or audiobooks? Um, so there's, there is some interest. Most of the, the youth at the, so in Roseville, um, all the high schoolers have iPads. And so they're in a position to be able to access e-books easily. Um, one, one interesting thing is that it's really difficult to read like novels on um, conventional e-readers and in a lot of different um, platforms that you can software that you use like on an iPad. So that makes it a little trickier because you love graphic novels. Um, in my experience at the library that's something I've learned and that was sort of a, a disappointment to see how it's a bit trickier to um, yeah, make those things work together. 